Uh, my impression of Lofoten is probably just like the prettiest place I've ever been in my whole life. Just driving around, I remember when we first got here, it was incredible, just staring at everything from the car. I like couldn't get my eyes away from the window. I've never seen mountains just jut straight to the sea like that, when especially like really cool mountains too. Coolars everywhere is mind blowing, really pretty. The main goal for the team trip to Lufoten Islands was to basically just bring all the team guys who were available to come, to come up, hang out, go camping, enjoy the outdoors, just have a good time hiking the mountains, surfing the ocean, and camping everywhere in between. Splitboarding is... Oh my god! It's like a love-hate thing, I guess. A fucking dream! When it comes to splitboarding, I always tease Griff. Like, oh, sick, six-hour hike for one run. Oh, that's so worth it. I always figure, like, hey, pff, I'd rather just go to the resort, ride the lift, get tons of runs in. But just the experience you get hiking up the mountain is... It's gonna suck for two or three hours. I'm gonna be sweaty, hot, people are gonna be falling, I'm gonna be hungry, thirsty. I feel like the most tired I've ever been in my whole life. <laughs> my ass is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's just pure snowboarding. Just all you need is the mountain with snow, and then you're just, it's all up to you to go where you wanna go, be safe on the way up, and then you get to ride whatever you want. You don't have to deal with anyone in the lifts, no powder panic, nothing. Just you and your friends in the mountains. That's like why I snowboard, so it's, it's an awesome thing for me. A lot of the people have never split boarded before or even been day, in a mountain setting like this. Excuse me, I want to set the pace. It's not easy hiking up the mountains with a group of 20 plus people and everyone has different skills in the mountains. Fucking nightmare. I feel like I'm running a daycare. Except for Bossy, he's a grown up. He's in the back, he's holding it down. Some people have done it before. Griffin, for example, is a pretty avid mountain guy. Griff definitely stands out to me as the most prepared for a trip like this. So he's easy, he goes up and down. Elias, the same thing. He has all his gear ready, he's ready to go. He could be in the car and out of the car with all his gear on within 20 seconds. Where you have guys like Dominic Wagner, who's never really done this before, takes him like, you want 15, Dominic? You know, an hour and a half to figure out where his toilet paper is. Toilet paper for taking dumps. Actually, so far I didn't even split board. People don't know how to set their split boards up. They don't know which way to put their skins. Pretty loose, <laughs> very loose program. Thanks, Marcus. If you've never done it before, it's not the easiest task. I think Chris probably set up like 10 different split boards on this trip. For sure, it, it can get confusing though, so I'm there for him. Is this supposed to be like this? <laughs> I've split boarded for the very first time in my life and I was pretty excited about it. It's great to be a skier, finally. One of the days, Canute decided it would be a good idea to hike one of the summits. I can't remember what the name of the place was. Uh, Rundfjellet. But man, the approach was so gnarly. Like, in the beginning, it was mellow, but it was later in the evening, and it got so icy, like, everywhere you walked. And it was pretty funny. And the hike up is funny because you see the guys who are experienced in it, 
they're just cruising along, boop, 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 no big deal, sweating a little bit, but just cruising along. And then you'll look back at the guys who've never done it before and they're struggling, they're falling, they're sweating, they're tired, they're pissed, they kind of hate being there. Like in some of those areas, if you slip, like you're gonna go over rocks or cliffs. It could get dangerous. <laughs> that crazy tour was my very first day split boarding. It was definitely, it was no walk in the park for sure. <laughs> Watching those other guys go up there that have never split boarded or anything, their facial expressions said it all. They were looked completely terrified. Going towards the top, I was like, oh man, like when are we finally gonna reach the peak? So we went over one ridge, I thought this is it, and then we dipped down, there's another peak, and another, and another, and another, and do, do we have to go all up there? But just the moment, going from like the shady face, super icy, over the ridge, and then the sun just hits you in your face, and you see the whole ocean, that one moment was worth every second of effort. Everyone made it, I was stoked. <laughs> I was definitely a little nervous for some of the dudes. It's been pretty insane to watch those guys learn on the fly. It's really cool. Sunset was amazing, beautiful. Had all the boys up there, 20 plus people hanging out. Okay, wait, hold on. We need one more photographer. <laughs> It's kind of my idea to do this, let's, let's bring the team up to Lufoten in the springtime, which is actually kind of a crazy idea because most of the time in the spring, it, it can rain for like two, three weeks straight. It's been raining all day today. I mean, we're on a couple of islands in the Atlantic Ocean. It's like above the Arctic Circle. So it's kind of a dumb idea by my part, but I was like, screw it, that'd be just so fun to get everybody up here and show them. There's so much to do, like if it's raining, we went surfing. If it's raining, we would go fishing. <laughs> if it rained, we would go out in a boat. If it was raining, we'd go over to the fish docks where they hang the fish <laughs> to dry. Oh, no. We'd build a quarter pipe and we'd have fun. I don't know. Rain days are fun days, too. If the weather is not playing with us, there's other things to look at. The jibbing? I love the jibbing. The boys, they jibbed it up in the phone and I heard they were pulling a bungee. <laughs> <laughs> urban kids even to an amazing alpine mountain place like Lufoten. It's like the old saying, you can bring the jib kids out of the park, but you can't bring the park out of the jib kids. People pay tens of thousands of dollars to go to the top of these peaks just for the view. And then half of the days, these guys, they're just looking for street spots. To me, that is insane, but they love it. The jibbers got a jib, you know? I respect the jibbers. <laughs> Maybe I'll head out one day. Don't ask me, man. Ask Benny. I think the jib kids are really cut out for the split board life, you know? I think like they really like to roll around in the van, oh, eat McDonald's, stop for coffee. So I just don't think that their thing is like having to worry about hiking around, avalanche danger, you know? Wait. Bob, of course, always really entertaining. One morning he decided he just wants to get thrown in the water to wake up. Griff talked me into letting him throw me into the water, which felt it was good. It was like a refreshing moment. Good crew, like everybody gets so psyched if you're doing anything, so I'm always down to try to entertain the group, you know? <laughs> the group dynamic was definitely on point. A lot of stuff going on all the time with 30 people.
<laughs> There's not many people in the world who get the opportunity to surf above the Arctic Circle. Brian Fox is from Southern California and he grew up surfing and he was so stoked to come to Lufoten. For snowboarding too, but a lot for surfing. So good, it's great. That was so good. I want to try to come super early tomorrow morning maybe. And he's a good surfer and it's super fun to watch him. And the rest of the team, you know, we're not the best surfers or some of us are absolutely terrible. He's always down. Like three duck dives and you got full on brain freeze, <laughs> ice cream headache. Dude. But it's just pretty awesome experience to go out into the freezing cold water. It's cold. With your wetsuit on, walk out with a board over snow and then try to catch waves. And then you have Brian just ripping in front of us. So I'm a big footy fan, I love soccer, and I don't know, years ago, I saw an image of this crazy field that was just on an island, right? I had no idea where it was, and it turns out that it's actually on one of the Lafoten Islands. Got there, there was no one there, sun shining, and we played soccer for like 90 minutes, the whole team together. Let's get it on! There's a lot of people like going ham, like giving it 110, like going into slide tackles. You could just tell like everyone was so psyched. Definitely got into it. I luckily stopped a minute because it's hard to beat the Euros. I knew there was a couloir on the way in, so I was like, I need to chill for a minute because I have a feeling me and Brian are going to end up hiking that. And then uh, Brian and Griffin, they decided to hike up this famous couloir called Preston's Couloir. Are you tired? I don't know which is a little longer. They're always a little longer and steeper than they look from the road. 560 meters straight up Kular, straight from the sea. It took them about two hours, while the rest of us drove to this beach towards the end of Lufoten called Kvalsvik. Kvalsvik. We came down from the Kular, threw our stuff back in the van, drove like an hour and a half, and then hiked into this camping area that was on the ocean. That was so insane. The last probably 45 minutes of the hike, we just had headlamps and we're hiking in just pitch black. Yeah, boys. Which was also a way longer hike than I was expecting. <laughs> the cooler hike was a little more than we were bargaining for. Huh. And then the two hour drive and then the hike up and over. But insane day I will probably never forget in my life. It's a super special place, I think, because we get to camp with everyone, <laughs> and I feel like you really get to know everyone in those small little environments, like when we're sitting in the rain by a fire on the beach. It's just like you're disconnected from everything. No bullshit anymore. You're just in beautiful nature, and it's good for the soul, I think. It's been awesome having the whole team, different people, different types of snowboarders, all together experiencing the beauty of snowboarding, how it can bring you to insane places. I have to say I'm, I'm really amazed by the fact that you can reach such special locations because for me, obviously, I have a different eye coming from street snowboarding. To all these dudes that I've known forever that are such good snowboarders and then just taking them up on like little hikes around here has been a super good time. Especially someone like Sven. Ready to go. Who I wouldn't even think loves flipboarding, but he's so hyped on it the other day. It's so fucking like, hey, this is awesome. He's like, this is so fun. Let's go hike somewhere else. I'm like, let's do it, dude. All day.
hard to put in words. It's just, I guess you have to experience it yourself.